Okay, here's I Drank the Sea Water with Doctor of Mind. I'm very excited to meet Doctor of Mind. Uh, we're we're going to be doing three videos together. Yes. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. I love this collaboration. I'm ready. Yeah. So, uh, I should say first, I didn't get to say in my intro video how, how, how exciting this is to me. I was Doctor of Mind, 307 subscriber. Yeah, I remember great. that. I remember I was a 307 subscriber, and I at the time I had like 20 subscribers. So I was like, wow, he's got 307 subscribers. I was always very impressed with this man. So being able to meet him is very cool. And you too, because you've been one of my very devoted watchers on YouTube, and that's why I feel like I'm glad to meet with you today. Yeah, very cool. So the first video uh, we wanted to make is about Tourette's. Uh, there's also going to be one about self-injury and eating disorders, but this first one is going to be about Tourette's. So, what are usually the first signs of Tourette's? Well, Tourette's Syndrome was named after Gil de la Tourette, who was Charcot's student, so that's interesting. They were neurologists. It, it's really a syndrome in childhood that peaks out in adolescence and basically stops totally by young adulthood. Okay. And usually uh, the symptoms first sign, are... Yes. Tourette's syndrome means a combination of complex motor tic, behavioral tics, movements, and vocal or phonetic outbursts, like blurting out statements or words. It's a combination of the motor and vocal tic that presents before age 17 and of course is not due to a medical or drug or related to drug use. Cause okay. Can, that can mimic Tourette's. So there, there can be Tourette caused by medication. And drug use like cocaine and stimulants and medical problems, everything from genetic disorders to infection. Okay, can it be caused by uh, like Seroquel? Well, actually, the treatment of Tourette involves the use, believe it or not, of antipsychotics. It's sort of crazy. How could an yeah. antipsychotic that causes part of this meeting actually help Tourette? What is that? Well, they feel it's the Tourette-related dopamine neurotransmitter, and they've actually, by accidentally using Haldol and people with threat, they noticed it improved it. And then there was another med called Pimazide that also improved it. And even though Pimazide is no longer available, those two oh, and I I well, well, in the U.S. In the U.S. it's not available. This is a Canadian-American <laughs> collaboration. I love it. You notice how pharmacology differs in different countries. Well, in, in, but Haldol and ORAP or Pimazide were are traditional antipsychotics that are FDA approved or approved by our government for Tourette's. It's interesting. Now, to answer your question, atypical antipsychotics can also be helpful, especially these milder ones, the spiritinergic, dopaminergic ones. So you'll see articles on respiridone, quetiapine, for Tourette's. In fact, one of my old teachers would sit in the back when I lecture and say he Dipressa or a landscape for Tourette. A landscape, okay. The problem, however, is side effects of the quetiapine and a landscape. Yeah, it's a strong oh, medication. You like my mom's oh, okay. Bird's not in that world. So who, who is the best specialist for someone to turn to if their child or say themselves are experiencing sick? That's a great question because, well, unfortunately for me as a psychiatrist, it's more li it's more a neurologic problem. So I would definitely see a neurologist first. Some of the treatment, for example, deep brain stimulation of the thalamus can just be eradicated, essentially mild neurosurgery. So I would definitely go to a neurologist first. I wouldn't go to a psychiatrist first unless the following. It's highly associated with OCD and ADHD and other and bipolar and other mental disorders. So in that case, it's important to get treated for those by a psychiatrist. 
because there's other medicines like clonidine or alpha blockers that are approved for it that aren't antipsychotics. Alpha blockers, clonidine. Okay. Another class of medication used for that. Okay, well, here's what I was in the middle of talking. We're talking about medication. I was thinking, do you suggest medication? Or do you think that this, the side effects of those medications are too severe to be really worse? Well, I suggest maybe, I mean, everyone will say try therapy first, like stress reduction. or Some people like Botox. There's some interesting work on that. But the medications I would try first because many patients respond to the medication. So if a simple medication works, then definitely I would try the medication first for some other more research-like treatment. Okay. Um. However, you need to be monitored carefully for, with the medication due to the side effects. Yeah. And not just keep taking it if you're getting the side well, strong, yes. Strong, strong medication. Yes, it's and, and quetiapine can cause diabetes, high cholesterol, weight gain. You got to be careful of all of those kinds. So that's why it's important if you do take it to be followed carefully. See the doctor frequently is prescribing it. Okay. Have you ever encountered a situation where someone was just pretending to have the Tourette's and they didn't actually have it? Yes, there's a subtype where it's like malingering or fictitious symptoms, but it's sort of hard to fake because part of it's voluntarily and suppressible. Some of it comes out under stress. There's pretty good ways to differentiate it neurologically from other movement disorders and psychological phenomenon like fake. Okay. And why would someone do that? There's all kinds of reasons, perhaps, uh, for the secondary gain, we call that. They want disability, they want to get out of work for three months. They may want to sue someone because it caused it. For example, this recent thing with the girls in New York, they tried to blame the Gardasilla vaccine. Okay. So there could be legal monetary gain. What are they saying that it gain. was, um, oh, how do you call it? Uh, psych, uh, they were trying to say it was psychogenic. Psychogenic, yeah. yes, that's the, that's the word I was looking for, but it was psychogenic. Uh, do you believe that drug can be psychogenic? Well, I don't believe, no. And, well, everything, everything was once called psychogenic till they found them biologic cause and they change the name. For example, organic mental disorder is now outdated because if you think about it, everything's organic, right? You can't separate the mental from the physical. It's just a matter of finding out if the physical is causing it. So, no, I don't believe it's psychogenic. But it could be not due to a medical or substance abuse and psychiatric but that's still medical, if you think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is the most effective therapy that can help, like not, like not medication? Uh, well, the Tourette's Association is having their annual meeting right now, this weekend. But it's in Virginia. We're on the wrong coast. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so networking, going to their website, getting some uh, information, some counseling, that can help. And then finally, neurosurgery. Deep brain stimulation is a technique being used for Parkinson's and other neurologic disorders. Tourette's lends itself to excellent stereotactic guided deep brain stimulating implant placement and subsequent stimulation over several weeks to wipe it out. But that's pretty high tech and not yet approved but I feel it will be soon. So there's everything from a lot of stuff before medication and stuff if the medication doesn't work okay, after the yeah, med. Yeah. So there's very good treatment options for this neurologic disorder. Okay. And uh, would you know why it is that 
Tourette's doesn't show up on a brain scan? Well, it, there are some findings. There's abnormal subcortical brain volume, but you really need to do uh, PET scan imaging, spec scan, because you won't find gross structural abnormalities that you might with other neurologic disorders, but there's certainly good functional imaging or, say, doing video EEGs while you're having the tick. There's all kinds of nice things to study it scientifically. But yes, you're right. So far, the scans aren't that great, but just stay tuned. Okay. Um, a lot of people suggest weed for ticks. How come, why is it that that works? Is it because it, it relaxes you? Well, maybe. There's, of course, one of the hallmarks of Tourette's is it's made worse by, well, it's affected by stress. For example, people can suppress it in school, and then when they're relaxed, it gets worse. So when they're home alone, it might change in frequency. That, so what was that? Um, About what, why is it effective? That oh, the cannabis. So I guess if you modulate the anxiety with the cannabis, for example, it might affect it. But I don't believe the THC receptors are directly relevant or they haven't been studied close enough with direct to recommend that. Okay, yeah. Um, why is it that we can do certain activities without having ticks? Good, because some of the ticks characteristically are made worse by certain things and are able to be suppressed by certain things. So it depends what you're doing and how much stress. Unlike other motor disorders. Okay. Okay. Um, do you ever hear of cases where at first the symptoms are mild, like maybe in childhood the, the symptoms are mild, but later on they get worse? Well, the, the symptoms are pretty well described to start off a little, then get worse in young. In, yeah. But what about in, adu in adulthood? Can well, it get worse in adulthood? Yes, yeah, 30%. 30% get worse in adulthood. That's because that's my my case. Mine got like I had ticks when I was a teenager. Yes. Um, on my neck I would twitch. Yes. Um, but then when I was an adult, I would have full body ticks. So yes. I was wondering like if that was. That's part of the natural history of the, of it, and that there's the treatment options available. So don't worry. So I'm not, I'm not alone. No, 30% of everything, there's no treatment. Schizophrenia, seizures, Tourette's. Approximately 30% of people don't respond to the regular treatment or, you know, it can get worse like that. So don't worry about that. Just take it more seriously and be up to date on the treatment. I, I feel well, we can eradicate this in your lifespan easily. Yeah. That would be nice. Um, for coprolalia, how come the well, how does the brain know which words are swear words and which ones aren't? Like, because because they obviously we end up swearing. So tell people what the, that is. Coprolalia. Yes. Well, that's when you swear. Uh, yeah, that's part of the motor tick. Ten percent. Blurred out. In ten percent of cases. Yeah. Or you blurred out swear words. So, uh, they. They've they've seen me swear I have coprolalia as well. So um, now what was the question? So uh, how how does the brain know that some words are swear words and some words aren't? Like how does it recognize that like this is a swear word therefore I will say it? In that's a good question. Too bad I'm not a neurologist full blown. That's a very good question for neurology. But I can answer it because the that the good and if they good and bad word is associated with your past memories and experiences and trauma and vocabulary and IQ and knowledge of words, which are all interrelated areas of the brain. So it's that's one of the functions of a complex brain. It's mostly focused in the prefrontal cortex where you have your higher cortical functions like planning, judgment, right from wrong, good and bad. And all of the input into the prefrontal cortex comes from your emotion center, previous trauma. So it's pretty related. That's one of the 
great things about the last frontier of the body or these kind of nice, interesting questions. Okay. But that's one of the functions of the brain. That's one of the functions. <laughs> so that was actually my final question. So uh, we'll, we'll be ending this video. This was uh, I Drank the Sea Water and Doctor of Mine as my special guest. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any further comments about Tourette, just let us know and oh, we'll try to answer. And for sure, uh, subscribe to Doctor of Mind. He makes videos about medication, about mental, mental, illness. mental illness. Substance uh, abuse and all kinds of stuff. Schizophrenia, right. his favorite is schizophrenia. I remember that. Um, yeah, so any, any mental illness that you have, you might be able to look up on his channel and find a video about it. So I would very much recommend that. I'm going to put the link in the description to his channel so that you guys can go and see that. Good evening.